Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to continue discussing the mole, and today's section involves molar mass. So as you guys are already aware, if you want to find the mass of a compound or an element or anything like that, you need to add up their atomic masses from the periodic table. In this case here, you have magnesium chloride. Magnesium is 24.3. If you look at the table, it's 24.3. Chlorine is 35.45. That's what they have there. You have two chlorines, so you need to double it, okay? You have two chlorines, so you need to double it times two. And then you add it up, and you get your total mass in AMU, okay? So this is for one single magnesium chloride. This is for one, one single particle. If you had one particle, you have this in AMU. Remember, AMU is for the atomic scale, okay? Some more examples, just to practice. What is the formula weight for sodium bromide? Uh, sodium bromide would be, and this is where all that stuff from the past comes in. You have to remember how to find these formulas. But at this point, obviously, you have access to the internet. so. And I don't mind if you use it to speed things up a little bit. So sodium is 23. Bromine is basically 80. And just to show you, okay, sodium is 22.99, round that up to 80. Bromine is 79.9, I rounded it up. I mean, this is 23, I'm sorry. And this is, I rounded it up to 80 just to make the math simpler. Add them up, you get 103. The closest thing here to 103 would be B. So that's the weight for that one. And one more. PBNO3. They give it to you, so all you got to do is just look at the table. PB is lead. Lead is 207. Nitrogen is 14, but we have two of them. We have two nitrogens, so that should be 28. And oxygen is 16, and you get three of them from one nitrate, but you have two. So actually, you have six, okay? So that would be 16 times 6, which would be 96, okay? So if you add them up, what do you get? Let's see here. This is basically 100, 130. So this would be this one, okay? That'd be the weight for that if you add up all the atomic masses. And then they get into another example. So what is molar mass? So yesterday, we learned what the mole is in general. And it is this. A mole is simply the number of atoms you need to go from AMU to the same value in grams. So... Here they give you some examples. If you have one mole of copper, you have 63.5 grams of copper. Where did that come from? Well, look at the atomic mass of copper. The atomic mass of copper is 63.5. If you have a mole of it, you have that exact number in grams. That's all a mole is. It's just a quantity. If you have a mole of aluminum, you have 26.98 grams of aluminum. And that comes from the molar, uh, the atomic mass of aluminum. So molar mass, molar mass is simply that atomic number mass, the AMU, divided by a mole, okay? So it's just like a unit. So it's something per something. So one, let's do this one. One mole of carbon, one mole of carbon is 12 grams. So if I wanted to put that in molar mass form, this would just be 12 grams in one mole, okay? So this whole thing right here, this is the molar mass of carbon, okay? So that's all molar mass is, okay? How is the atomic mass related to the molar mass? 
Well, they're the same value. The only difference is one's in AMU and the other one is in grams, okay? So yesterday we worked with particles, okay? Today, yes, today we're going to be strictly working with mass, okay? So yesterday, Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is what you use to go from moles to particles. You go back and forth between them, moles and particles, okay? Molar mass is what you use to go back and forth between mass and moles, okay? So yesterday was particle in moles. Today it's mass in moles. That's the difference. So if you have one mole, and here's another example. If you have one mole of krypton, one mole of krypton is 83.8 grams. So the molar mass is 83.8 grams per mole. It is just how many grams you get in one mole of anything, okay? That's what molar mass is. Okay? And this is, again, this is this stuff is irrelevant. Just everything is molar mass. I'm not going to say gram atomic mass, gram formula. You know, I would never do that. This is this, These sections are irrelevant. Okay? So the formula we learned yesterday, this is a reminder, we learned that moles is equal to N, where N is the particle number, or how many particles you have. Okay, I'll just leave it short. Particles divided by Na, where Na is Avo's number, okay? Today's formula is, again, you have a little n. Little n is moles. M is the mass of whatever you have, and the big M is the molar mass. So if you know two of them, you can find a third one, okay? So again, today we're going to be strictly working with mass and moles. So if you know these two, if you know the number of moles and the molar mass, you can find the mass. If you know these two, you can find moles. And if you know these two, the mass and the moles, then you can calculate the molar mass. So you need to know two of them in order to find a third. Okay, that's for general problem solving. Yeah. So now let's practice using this formula. How many moles are in a 64 gram sample of pure sulfur? So what do we have right now? Right now we have the mass, so we have M. Check. What are we looking for? We are looking for moles, so we're looking for little n. So what do we need? We need the molar mass. You get the molar mass from the periodic table. Go to sulfur. The atomic mass is going to be the same as the molar mass, okay? So it's 32.06, so our molar mass is going to be 32.06. So now we know both of them. So N is going to equal to 64 divided by 32, okay? If the number is that close, I don't mind you rounding it. So it's 32.06, okay? They round it down to 32 just to make the math easier, which is what I would do as well. So 64 divided by 32 is going to be 2. So here the answer is A. Let's do one more, and then we move on to the next portion. How many moles? Okay, this is a single element. Do they have one where? Nope, iron, neon. Nope. Okay, these are all these are all single. So I can do Let's do this one. How many moles are in a 72 gram sample of pure magnesium? So again, we are looking for little n. We're looking for this. We know this, and we need to get the molar mass. And again, the molar mass would be the same as the atomic mass. Periodic table, magnesium is 24.3. So then n. It is going to be 72 divided by 24. Again, they rounded down just to make the math easier. 
So this would be 24, 48, this would be 3. Nah, jeez. And this is how you go from moles to mass and mass to moles. Next portion, diatomic molecules. Okay. So at this point, we've learned that the molar mass is the same as the atomic mass. But you need to be careful when we're talking about the diatomic molecules or the Honkelbrifts. Okay. Like we've said in the past, there are certain things that can't live by themselves. These things are all the elements that cannot live by themselves. So if we had hydrogen, for example, you might be tempted to say, well, the molar mass of hydrogen is one gram per mole because the atomic mass is one. But you need to remember that hydrogen is one of those things that cannot live alone. So you always have two of them. It always comes in pairs. So if I ask you what the molar mass of hydrogen is, it's actually you need to double it. So it would be two grams per mole. Same thing with bromine. Bromine is also a Honkelbrift. The atomic mass of bromine is 79.9, okay? But the molar mass would not be 79.9. You need to double it. If you had fluorine, same thing with fluorine. Okay, you have to double it. Now let's do one more. A common one, oxygen. Oxygen, that's a, that's a horrible circle. Oxygen is also a Honkelbrift. So you need two of them. It normally would be 16 for one, but you have two. So it's 32 grams per mole. Okay, that's only if it's the pure form, okay? So notice how this is hydrogen gas, this is bromine, this is fluorine only. So only if it's by itself. If it's in a formula with something else, then obviously you just need to count how many of them you have. So some more examples. Let's do two of these again. How many grams are in one mole of hydrogen molecules? So we know this. We're looking for this. We're looking for M. So we need the big M below. So we need to rearrange the equation. This is where your algebra comes in. Remember I told you guys in the beginning, I'm not going to be teaching you algebra. I expect that you know how to rearrange a formula. So we are looking for M. So to do that, we need to get rid of the big M. So you get N times big M is equal to little m. So, one times, we have one mole of hydrogen molecules, so we need the molar mass, which would be two, because remember, it's a diatomic, so this would just be two. Next, same question, except different chemical and different mole amount. So same thing. N times big M is equal to little m. So we have 0 0.5 times, again, what is the molar mass of oxygen? You might be tempted again to say 16, but this is just for one oxygen. Oxygen lives in pairs, so you need to double it. So the molar mass of oxygen would be 32. So this would be 0 0.5 times 32. 0 0.5 is the same thing as a half. So half of 32 would be 16. So a half a mole of oxygen gas would give me 16 grams of it. Okay. This is the same thing. Um, this is the molar mass of a compound. This is the exact same thing as we did before with the magnesium chloride. So if you have in the formula, so in this case it's SO3, one sulfur is 32, one oxygen is 16, but you have three of them, so you need to triple it, and you add it up. Okay, so this is what we did in the beginning of the lesson. 
Okay. So what they're trying to highlight here is even though you have a mole of both, you have one mole of glucose, you have one mole of water, you have one mole of both, but the mass is different. The math, the maths is different because the atoms or the molecule themselves are different sizes, okay? Remember that a mole is just a number. It's Avogadro's number. It's just how many particles you have. But the mass is going to vary depending on how big the particle is, okay? So just remember that you can have a mole of two different things, but they're going to have different masses, all right? And then this last part is having, having us calculate the molar masses. So what is the molar mass of K2O? So we know O already. Okay, what is K? I'm going to round that down to 39. So then that would be 39 times 2. Okay, so this is 39 times 2. Okay. So this would be 30, 60, 69, 78, 88, 94. Okay. And one more example. What is the molar mass of calcium carbonate, which is found inside of eggshells? So looking at these answers, pay attention to the units. So anything with AMU, is automatically wrong because that's not the unit for molar mass okay remember molar mass is always the number of grams of something you get in one single mole okay so that's the molar mass unit so you know right away a and c are wrong okay so it's either 50 or 100 calcium weighs how much it's 40 so it's 40 grams per mole Carbon is 12, and oxygen is 16. So from calcium, we get 40. Carbon is 12. And the oxygen is 16 times 3, because we have three of them. Okay. So this would be 48. So this comes up to be 48. So 48 plus 12 is 60 plus 40 is 100. So the answer here is D. And that's how you find molar mass of a compound or chemical or whatever you would like to call it. And these are more examples, but I'm going to leave it at that. So remember to sum up. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of something, okay? It is how many grams you get in a single mole. The atomic mass is going to be the same as the molar mass, okay, for all of them. And the atomic mass, if you're talking about atomic mass, remember the unit needs to be AMU, okay? The only difference between atomic mass and molar mass is that atomic mass refers to if you only have one particle while molar mass refers to if you have one mole, okay? That is the difference between atomic mass and molar mass. The number may be the same, but the unit is different, which means it represents something else. And I believe that is the last thing. The rest of these are just more practice of what we've already done. Yep, that's the last, that's the last thing, okay? So I'm going to do, I believe, two problems from the worksheet, and we will call it a day. So today's section is the molar mass section. So this is also going to give you good practice with remembering chemical names. So if, the, if you have the name, what does, it, what does it mean? For things like this, like sucrose, I don't expect you to have sucrose memorized. It's sugar. So you can look that up. Honestly, you can look them all up, um, but that won't help you necessarily practice if you just look them up. But obviously, you have, again, you have access to the internet. But this is going to help you practice formula naming if you guys forgot some of those rules. So number one, or 11 in this case, 
dinitrogen pentoxide. So this is a covalent compound. Remember, covalent compounds can use those prefixes. So dinitrogen, that means we have two nitrogens, N2. Pentoxide, pent means five, so N2O5. We want to know what is, or we want to, I'm sorry, we want to find how many grams are in 12.3 moles. Okay, so we're looking for little m. So the formula we're using for this one is that little m is equal to little n, which is the number of moles, times big M, which is the molar mass. So we need the molar mass of this. So the molar mass of this would be 16 times 5, because you have 5 oxygens, plus 14 times 2, because you have 2 nitrogens. Okay? So let's do this is this is the molar mass. This is what I'm looking at right now. This is molar mass. So that's 50, 30, that's 80. 80 plus 28, this should be 98. Okay. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's not 98. This should be 108. Yeah. So this is 50 plus 30 is 80, and this is 28 at 108. And remember the unit of this, this is grams per mole. That's the molar mass of dinitrogen pentoxide. So now that we have big M and we know little n, we can answer the question. So the mass is just going to be equal to 12.3, which is the number of moles we have. times 108. You put that into your calculator, you get your final answer. Okay, that's number 11. Okay, we're looking for grams, which means we're looking for little m. We need to rearrange the formula from earlier. We needed to calculate the molar mass. The molar mass is, again, just the sum of all the atomic masses. You have two nitrogens, so you need to double the 14, and you have five oxygens. You need to multiply the 16 by 5. That's where our 108 comes from. And once you have these, you just multiply the moles by the molar mass, and you get your grams. So put that into your calculator, you get your answer. Let's do one more. Let's do aspirin. Let's do aspirin. No, do I want to do aspirin? Yeah, let's do aspirin. I'll leave 18. I was thinking about doing 18 just because it's a little harder, but I'll leave the I'll leave the fun ones for you guys. So aspirin, we're looking for grams again, which means we're looking for a little m, which means we need the molar mass. So carbon is 12, right? So we're looking, this is this is big M. This is me calculating big M. From carbon, it's 12. And we have nine of them. So we have to multiply that by nine. Hydrogen is one. But we have eight of them. And then oxygen is 16. And we have four of them. So let's see if I can do this all in my head. So this is 90, 18, so this is 108. 108 plus 8 is 116. And this is 40, 20, this is 64. So 116 plus 64 gives us 180 grams per mole. So now we have big M, we can answer the question. So how many grams of aspirin are in this many moles of aspirin? Now we get that mass is equal to the moles, 
times 180. Put that into your calculator, you get your answer. Okay. And that's it for today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you all the best. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Again, you can work together and things like that and use all the resources you have at your disposal. Okay? Enjoy the rest of your day.